Welcome to Coveo Labs, where we cut through the marketing fluff and we actually focus on fun, innovative use cases for Coveo. My name is Gauthier Robe. I'm one of the vice presidents of product. My name is Isaac Berzins. I'm the social editor for Coveo. But before we get any further, we should explain what Coveo Labs actually is. Absolutely. So Coveo Labs is all about taking the out-of-the-box features of Coveo and using them to build uh, innovative use cases from uh, Chrome extension, playing with uh, voice assistant, or building chatbot, and we'll be talking about that today. We are not interested in hyping things that we, you cannot build with yeah. Coveo Labs. What we really want is you to take the code and get on your way to those fun stuff. Exactly, and while talking about chatbots as a whole, it's a really kind of overhyped, overmarketed marketplace of things. But we intend on getting to the real source of the issue here and the real power that chatbots could have. Yeah, absolutely. So we want to demystify it a little bit. And, uh, you know, yes, chatbots are all the hype today. Everybody's talking about them. Everybody has a new framework for them. Um, people are telling you it takes five minutes to build one. So we, we're going to talk about that. The, the first thing you need to realize is that um, your chatbot's going to be as good as the foundation. And, yeah. what, and the effort that you put behind it. As we say, like, um, simple bot experience are very easy to build. Mm -hmm. and exactly, it takes a few minutes. But really, when you want to start talking about a good customer experience with context, etc., that's where it starts to be a lot more complicated and where search can help. Exactly. So it really depends on what's under the hood of this chatbot. So it's great that you can have this beautiful user interface and beautiful design of it. But if it can't search the relevant information, what's the point? Exactly. And also, one of the things you need to remember about chatbot and all the demos that you have seen, um, most of them are really scripted. You know, you need to plan for every single interaction that your user is going to have with the bot, uh, every variation of those questions. And there's a lot of variations that can happen, right? Absolutely. I mean, you see that the best bots, the one you know provided by Google, Amazon, etc., while well, they have the data behind it, they have exactly. millions and millions of queries from users, and then they can start building the models around that. You know, the, the Coveo chatbot is actually using a, a Slack framework, which we could use about anything, you know, from mm -hmm. Facebook Messenger to a standalone uh, application. Um, and really where Coveo and Search helps is actually alleviating that work of planning for every single question and variation of that question. Exactly. So I think this is no better time to show us what our Slack bot is capable of. Yeah, absolutely. So if you look at my screen here, um, well, the first thing that we do, you can uh, summon your bot. Um, in Slack, you can use the uh, slash bot name uh, command, or you can talk to him as a person. And the first thing you would do is to make sure the bot is available and you greet him. And then you can start asking questions. So the first thing you can do, it's a very simple query, like you would type in a search engine, but you're communicating with the bot in the context of your work. So I can say search for Coveo Cloud Security. And you can see that we get uh, two results being proposed out okay. of 345 results. Because what we do, thanks to our relevance algorithm, we are confident enough to provide you with just two results. We could also limit it to one. And also, as you can see at the bottom, we have that um, information asking you for your feedback. Yeah, was if this was correct or not. Exactly. Yeah. And that feedback is actually being reused by the machine learning model to improve uh, the ranking. Now, how important is this? Should we be using this for kind of every instance of using the Slack bot? Um, not necessarily. Um, I mean, you, you can, and it's always a good thing to ask for user feedback. Mm -hmm. um, but it really depends on the uh, interaction that you want. Yeah, yeah, the user was asking a very broad query, and typically I'm returning a lot of answers or documents, so it's good to ask. Uh, if um, those documents were meaningful for him. You now you can have um, other use cases, and you know, Coveo doesn't have uh, a deep learning capability, yeah. so deep learning being used to do image recognition, for example. But you can connect to external uh, services to do that, to improve uh, the index. Yeah, like Amazon recognition or similar Microsoft services. Exactly, and so if I make a query uh, for an image, so find an image, uh, of um, beach. Wish I was at the beach right now. Exactly. You see that we get um, beach results. And okay. the nice thing here is that the word beach doesn't happen in the, the title or yeah. the document name, but really in the metadata associated with the image. And those metadata have been generated by deep learning. 
So in this kind of experience, you don't have to ask uh, the user for feedback because obviously we're not able to modify the image anyway. Of course, and what I love about this too is that it's displaying the results directly in the Slack chat. Of course, you know, user experience goes, the less clicks, the better. So what if someone was asking a question to the Slack bot? Yeah, so that's a very typical uh, scenario. And if you document of some sort of structure, mm -hmm. not only are we able to answer, but we can answer with just that piece of information they want. So Beautiful. Um, the, the first example was giving you back full documents. This uh, next example I'm going to show you is actually going to return just uh, the keywords that you ask for. Let's see so, it in action. Question, typical question at Kaveo, what are the version for the SharePoint connector. And you can see here that I'm not being returned the um, online help document uh, that explains the entire SharePoint connector, yeah. but I'm being returned the piece of information I asked for, so the version of the SharePoint being supported 2010, 2013, 2016 in this case. This is the typical things that you can do with a bot, but you have seen that we, um, we're very much into a type of dialogue, it's a question and an answer. Yeah. What we're working on now, and that's the most complex part, is creating a, a sense of context. Yeah. So keeping the information that the user provided a few minutes before and reusing that. So if I'm asking a question, you know, most likely my next question is going to be in the context of that first one. Of course, so it's and constantly that, remembering, you know, exactly. the last couple of data points that were happening. Exactly. And that's where building the bot becomes more difficult because then you need to remember what were those previous sessions from the users, et cetera. Yeah. The other things that we're working on and that can help the user experience um, is actually um, triggering action from the bot. So okay. not only receiving you know, answer, but if I take my, my beach example, if someone is looking for pictures of a beach, we could trigger the uh, travel booking agent, et cetera. So yeah. going further and leaving uh, the bot action. And I think it's important to remember too is that sci-fi may have mistreated us or misled us combined with current day marketing of hoping these bots will be conversationalists. But as we've said before, it's very much in the heart of it, a question and an answer. Yeah. And, and, and we're getting there to the conversation piece and the whole uh, NLP, so natural language processing mm -hmm. and natural language queries. But as I said, it, it takes a lot of work and uh, takes a lot of uh, data point uh, to get there. So for anyone looking to implement a chatbot, they should really have their expectations in check to a certain extent. Yeah, and they should start, um, you know, baby steps. Yeah. You know, make a simple chatbot in, in, in an hour or two, see what the interaction is, um, how much you, internal or external user, love it or not, and then go for that. And, you know, one thing that you need to remember is you really need to, to plan that dialogue. You need to plan that user experience because yeah. that's when you start creating all those variation around the questions. Of course. Uh, and you, know, you can start anticipating what's going to be asked by the user. Now, my question for you is how many people or customers or partners are actually using this technology right now? So we have quite a few partners that have done pull requests on the, the Coveo Labs uh, code. Mm -hmm. um, we had one actually featuring their own version of the Coveo uh, chatbot uh, symposium recently. Awesome. And, uh, and as we said at the beginning, uh, a lot of customers are asking uh, for bots. Everybody yeah. wants one. Um, so this is a hot topic, and, and I think that's why it's important that we publish the code so you can try it and see if it fits uh, your use case. So whenever you're talking about building your own bot in a very kind of short period of time, do you have any examples that you could show that you've built recently? Yeah, absolutely. So the one that we're looking at now, uh, it's actually a bot that we built in a few hours. Um, so we, we released a few new product recently, you probably know about it. Yes, it's called so Coveo and Elasticsearch. Um, and instead of building an FAQ on um, you know, simple text document that people have to go through, they can actually ask questions to a bot. So it's a very simple bot, it's a question-answer bot, mm -hmm. uh, but it's also a, a more natural dialogue than just looking through a piece of paper. Exactly. No one wants to scroll through or hit Control F to find exactly what they're looking for when they can just type it into a search bar. Exactly. So here, for example, if I type my first question that people would probably be asking is, what is Coveo on Elasticsearch? And I'm getting the answer that you would typically find in the FAQ. Amazing. But now I can start asking questions and starting a little dialogue. You know, what's the price? Uh, when is it released, et cetera. Yeah. Um, natural workflow of users. Now, I think there's something very interesting in the corner of the screen here. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so we, we've been talking about bots and typing. Um, and I guess that's 
you know, the natural experience and what people think of when uh, we're talking about bots. Mm -hmm. uh, but really, you can use voice. Voice yeah. is a new uh, inter input interface. Exactly, uh, with, with all the assistance that we have out there. It's exactly, and we've done a lot of progresses uh, lately in terms of um, voice interaction. Yeah. So you can very easily add that to your bot. Uh, there are a lot of systems out there that make it pretty much plug and play, and in this Amazing. case, we can do the same thing. So think about a mobile experience. Yeah. To start. What is Coveo on Elasticsearch? Coveo on Elasticsearch is the latest advance of our... So see, we can get that answer, you know, spoken. Again, as I said, mobile device, that's probably the best way to interact with it. And that's really interesting too, because I think like a lot of us, we're using more of these virtual assistants and we're being more apt to try and search with our voice as a whole. So this is totally in line with where you know, search is going. And of course, it's important to remember that behind all of these virtual assistants, it's search is powering everything. Exactly. Again, if you want to try this out, head to our GitHub page. It's github.com slash Labs, and you'll find out the code and the instruction to get running with your own chatbot. We really want to see this out in the wild. So partners, customers, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty and start experimenting a little bit. Exactly. If you build something cool with Coveo, make sure to let us know. We can feature you on the show. Or even tell us on social media. You can find us on Twitter at Coveo. And most importantly, thank you for your time for watching the very first episode of Coveo Labs, and we're looking forward to seeing you soon.